guys, it's Cats from So Sweet Charms, and today I'm going to show you um, how to make your own waffle mold. Now this is so super easy to do. This is made out of uh, Primo brand clay, and it's my scraps, so you can see it's all marbleized there. I just keep all my different scraps in a plastic bag, so if I need to make any molds, that's what I use so that I'm not wasting any good clay. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of my remaining clay here, and I'm gonna show you how I made this. This particular one is a larger waffle set, and you can use it for uh, bigger waffles or waffle cones. And basically what I did was I pressed down toothpicks going across here just like that, and pushed it down, and I rolled over top of them so you could get deep grooves. And then I went the opposite way. Once it's fully baked, I bake this one for about an hour. Um, it becomes hard. I hope you can hear that. And you're able to use it as um, a template, basically. And I'll show you how that works. But I'm just gonna show you no another waffle. And basically what I'm making is a thinner waffle setting so that I can use it for tinier charms, like ice cream cones or whatever it might be. So I'm just gonna roll it out. And I like to keep it thick as possible, or if you wanna roll it out thin, that's completely up to you. And just try to get it as even as possible. And it doesn't have to be too big. All right. And what I'm gonna to use to, today to make a thinner uh, waffle is actually, you can use a credit card or a playing card or whatever it might be. Just make sure there's not too much uh, flexibility because you want it to be sturdy enough. So I'm just gonna show you how I do it. So I'm just gonna start by placing a line. Okay, and then you want it evenly spaced out. So the thinner it is, the more tinier your little waffles are gonna be and that's gonna be a desired look for like waffle cones. Push down and just make sure you're not pushing too far down that you're um, cutting right through the clay because that's not what you want. Okay, and you're just going to go across the whole entire surface or as big as you want it, which I think that might be okay for me that size there. I'm just going to give it a quick lift to just to turn it so that it's easier for me. And then I'm going to run it the opposite way. And I'm putting uh, quite a bit of pressure on here just so I get those nice indents. And make sure they're as even as possible. And if they're a little bit off, that naturally happens in nature, right? When we're looking at ice cream cones, the waffles are not exactly, or the waffle pattern's not exactly the same on every single piece, so. If you have OCD, this may not be the technique that you want to go, or you may want to do it over and over again until you achieve the proper look. And that's basically it. So what I do at this point is I don't want all this other scrap because I can use it for other things that I might make. So I just get my blade. This is a scrape blade. And I just trim it off to however big I want it. So. I'm just basically just trimming off the excess here that I didn't use. All right, so you can see the larger waffle. I hope you can see that well. The larger waffle and the smaller one. I hope you can see that. All right, so I just placed it on my baking tray and I'm gonna bake that piece probably for about 45 minutes, um, just so that it, it hardens really well. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to actually use this. Now keep in mind, this you are working with clay. Um, you wanna dust your surfaces. 
So I use cornstarch and right here is actually a nylon fabric. So like nylon stockings or even um, a jade cloth or a cleaning cloth. But this particular one is actually like nylon stockings that you would get at the dollar store or wherever it might be like the knee highs. Use that and you're gonna fill it up with cornstarch as, as much as you want. And then you just tie it off on the top and what that does, it just allows the perfect amount, I hope you can see that on the board, of cornstarch to come out without having like a whole pile of it. So basically I'm just gonna dust my surface very lightly. And like I said, I'm doing it over and over because not a whole lot comes out at one time. So you can see it went in between the grooves. So I'm just gonna tap out that excess as best as you can. All right, and make sure to clean your hands, use your baby wipes. And I'm going to be using the Ecru as my base color. And then I'm gonna do shadings of other colors. So I'm just gonna prime my clay here. Now, if you ever find that your clay is getting really soft and your surface is getting too sticky, just apply some cornstarch on it and it will help with that. Right. So this is nice and primed. All right. My rolling pin has like lots of colors on here. I have to give it a good clean. Right. And I'm going to roll it to however big I want it to be, how big those waffles I want them to sit at. Now this particular one, I'm gonna make earrings. So I'm gonna roll it out to about that big, and about that thick, so not too bad. And I'm just gonna place it down lightly. And at this point, you can either use your fingers if you don't have a rolling tool, or use a pencil crayon to roll across the surface. I have my rolling pin, and I'm just lightly, I'm not pressing down super hard. I'm just lightly rolling across so that I get that impression. All right, and then you lift it up and you peel it back. And there you go. Perfect little waffles. And again, if you want deeper ridges, you can press that even further, but I think um, I might go deeper. Let's do that. So again, great thing about clay Squeeze it back up, start again. Dust if you have to. Roll this out again. And I want it big enough that I can make two earrings actually. So that's, there we go. And you can choose anywhere that you like on here. That's the great thing about having such a, a larger work surface. So I'm just pressing down a little bit harder this time going the other way so this one should be deeper another tip to take these off um, I'm just showing you because I'm working real time here but another uh, way of doing this would be placing it in the freezer and then pulling it off so that you don't get too much uh, distortion so there we go those turned out great now I'm going to get my blade again and I'm just going to cut out on the outside of the line because I want to make them tiny little earrings and I want them as perfect as possible. So I'm just going to trim out this little area here. I hope you can see that guys. So yeah, I'm going to do that again because I 
I find that it had a little bit too much distortion. So you can see some of my areas here are slanted. Um, I guess I didn't do it too perfectly. So I'm going to try to do this little square area because I think that's the most um, ideal one or this strip here. So I'm just going to make the clay longer. So this is great for you guys to know that most of the time when people do videos, they have uh, practiced it or edited it. I keep it real. So I'm doing the projects as you guys are doing the projects. So that you know that it doesn't always have to be perfect in that first shot. Practice makes perfect, right? Take some time. Okay, let's hope this one worked out better. Yes. And just making sure. So I only have one perfect square here. So I'm going to do it in two shots here. Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. So just bear with my sniffles. All right, so that's one of them. And you can smooth out the edges or roll it out. And that's completely up to you. Now I'm going to show you another technique because you know that um, waffles tend to have like uneven textures and I'll explain what I mean like um, what am I trying to say I'm trying having a hard time finding words today but I'll show you with this <laughs> so I'm just going to use um, tin foil and I'm going to use the shiny sides to imprint imprint on the actual clay and that just makes like indentations and unevenness that naturally baked stuff has so you just kind of crinkle it up however you want and you just go across it and you can do it to the sides as well but just keep in mind that it is going to be get uh, sliced so you may not see that so I hope you can see the texture of it. I'm gonna place a little bit of cornstarch and I'm gonna find my perfect square here, probably that area there. And I'm just gonna roll across it. cut these out so you can see the difference and I hope you can see the difference because I can definitely see the difference I'm just fixing the edges so I hope you can see that um, basically it is texture so it looks more realistic in terms of like real waffles another option would be gently coming across this and just placing the the imperfections on here if you want them clean and sharp you can definitely do that but I like the little imperfections another option would be using a toothpick and just kind of picking at it but I find that the foil works really best and you can use it in different sides because there's always different little areas that have better uh, textures. So I'm doing the sides of the piece. So you can see that's a little bit more realistic and I like that. Okay, I'm going to place that one and I'm going to find the matching one of that. And I forgot what side I was working on. Sorry guys. So I'm just going to I think it was this side, so we'll give that a try. Whoops. Just verifying which side it was, because I'm not too sure. And that's a good thing, pay attention to what side you're working on. Gonna try 
trim off the excess a little bit more on this. And those are about even. Just gonna fix the sides. Beautiful. And I'm just gonna do my texturing on here. And remember to hit the sides. That's what I'm just doing. I'm just placing it on the plastic and then just tapping it on the actual side of the product. Or you can put it in your hand and just lightly tap the texture. Now, if you find your clay is too soft, like I said before, you can use the, the cornstarch or you just leave the clay to the side and it will harden up a bit. Um, it comes back to room temperature and then you can use it again. There we go. Just gonna fix the shape. Gonna square it off just a bit here. And there's my waffles. Perfect and cute. So now I'm gonna dust them. I'm just using, um, I just picked these up at the dollar store. You can get more expensive ones, but for dusting, I like to use the cheaper ones for the fact that um, if they bend or break or the bristles become uh, too crispy, um, I could just throw it away and I haven't wasted a whole lot of money. But these are really good actually. So I'm just gonna get, you could get a paper plate or whatever you have and I'm just tapping out my colors. Now these colors are actually from um, a cake decorating store called Golda's Kitchen. And sorry, they've been used a lot for my cake decorating and they're just pigment colors. So like dusting colors, if that's what you're searching for online and they work really well. Their, their colors are much stronger than using um, chalks or pastel colors. Oops, a little bit too much orange there. I'll scoop the rest out. So what I wanna do is make it look like it's somewhat toasted. So I'm just gonna combine these two colors together and just bring in a little bit of orange. So the three of them. And I'm gonna lightly dust Sorry guys, just realized I was doing it off of the camera. So I'm just getting the yellow and I'm going inside the actual squares. And then the other color with the brown mixture, I'm just going right around it. And doing this will actually bring out um, your textures that you made with the foil. Now, if you notice that you've placed or some of the textures have gone away, you can always um, use your foil on top of this. So, which I'll show you what I mean. So now that it's dusted, just going back and I'm just placing more textures and those colors will go right into what you're pressing down on here so you can see it's a nice toasted piece and you can color as dark as you want or as light so those are the two the differences between them so I'm just gonna get the yellow again and I'm just going inside the squares first just on the yellow color and then now I'm getting the the yellow the brown and the orange combination. Now, if you wanna know what colors I am actually using, the orange is carrot, the brown is chocolate, and um, the yellow is golden corn. Okay, so then I'm going around here, put a little bit more brown. And I 
hope that's in focus. Now, if you notice that you've put too much color in an area, don't worry about it too much. Um, when it bakes, it tends to lighten up as well. So it's not much to worry about. But if you don't like it, you can always use rubbing alcohol and that will come right off. And that's the back side of the earring. You don't have to worry about it too much, but I like to finish it off. All right. That's my waffle. So I'm just gonna do the texturing to this one as well. I'm just gonna square it off just a bit more. Square this one off. Alright, two waffles done. Now I'm going to show you, this is the first time I'm actually doing this. I'm going to be using TLS. Oh, it dripped out. I didn't even know that happened. Don't leave it on its side. I don't know why it dripped. But anyways, <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of TLS here. Maybe too much. Alright gonna grab a toothpick and I'm just gonna separate some of that because that's way too much because I only need a little bit and I'm going to be making the maple syrup all right so like I said this is the first time doing it so we're learning this together so I'm just gonna put in a tiny tiny bit and keep in mind, from what I'm aware of, um, you have to put a lot of color if you want it really super dark uh, to show through. Or if you just want like a light amount, then this will be perfect. And just make sure it's um, blended really, really well. because you don't want any of like the powders to be showing. So I hope you can see that. I'm just blending it in together. I'm just gonna grab some more TLS here. Once you add the powder, it tends to take away the amount of TLS because it becomes thicker. Pushing it down. And if you've ever felt TLS, it just feels like glue, really. So I'm gonna put a little bit more in here. And I'm hoping the color I'm making is dark enough that it will look like maple syrup. That's what I'm hoping for. Because like I said, I'm doing this with you. So I'm picking up quite a lot on my um, toothpick. And the reason for that is I want it to kind of just drip off. There we go. And you kind of just spread it out to where you want it to flow. So kind of like you have to think of how maple syrup kind of stays in a spot and then it like flows out if you know what I mean or how it spreads out and you can have it drip down the side if you find that you've put way too much which I think I may have but it does dry clear keep that in mind so I'm hoping that it will show the little squares underneath like I said guys I'm not too sure how this is going to work out So two totally different looks on either one of these. There we go. I'm just gonna grab a toothpick, just kind of pull this excess that's sitting here out of that hole. Just pull it across. Just gotta lift it up in my hand. Pull it over the edge. And be careful not to, to warp out the actual design. Pick this one up very carefully. 
And I'm just pulling out some of the excess, allowing it to drip down the side. And like I said, I have no idea how this is going to turn out, so I'm hoping it turns out quite well. So more. You can have as many as you want dripping down, because obviously that's what happens when you're doing pancakes or waffles, crepes. When you put that syrup on, it kind of goes everywhere. So I just realized that this cut out, so I'm hoping it's at this, the point where it just turned off. So I apologize if it cut out earlier and that you've gotten all the steps, but we've added quite a bit of ecru to the color yellow. So I'm looking for more of a lighter buttery yellow, but yellow enough that you can tell it's a piece of butter. Okay. Looking for my blade couldn't find it. So just rolling out pieces. I'm cutting little thin strips and what I'm going to do is make little tiny squares. For my butter. And if you need to just fix them, manipulate them, you can definitely do that. Just place, placing a piece there. And the TLS is on here as well, so that's what we used for the clay and for the the syrup. So I'm just raising it up, and that help it will help it stay on there as well. See, multi-use for TLS. Put that in there. There we go. So we are done. If you wanted to add fruits on there, you definitely can. So I'm going to bake these in the oven for about 45 minutes and I will come back and show you how it turns out. Thanks guys. All right guys. So we're back. They just come out of the oven. They baked for actually about an hour. Now the technique of this didn't actually turn out how I thought it would have. Um, it did here on the side a little bit. And I think it's because I applied a thinner coat. I hope you can see that properly. Now this is quite thick in there, so that's why I think it's a little bit more opaque. Um, yeah, or darker, however you wanna call it. The sides turned out quite well. So next time I'm going to try to do it with uh, a lot less color pigment or more TLS because I think the amount of TLS that I had in it um, with it created it quite strongly so I hope you can see that I don't know if it's in focus sorry guys I'm still doing this camera thing so I hope you can see that you can see that there is a shine to it um, and there's a syrup on the side I like the effect of the syrup on the side it turned out quite well but on the areas, uh, the other areas, they're a little bit too dark. And this one got out of warp a little bit. So like I said, it is a learning uh, curve for both of us or those of you who are new to this. So the effect did turn out quite well, like if you can see on the side. Just trying to get a better angle. I don't know why this is not going in focus, but sorry guys. Down here it's focusing properly, not up close, but anyways. So it turned out quite well. Um, the colors are on there and I think the color, when we did the dusting, it turned out really well. But I'm still gonna use these for my daughter. I think she'll love them. As well as here is our um, clay piece, fully baked. It is still flexible. When you bake it for a long time, the Primo brand it does become very flexible so I'm gonna see if I can find a piece of clay here and just give it a test 
and this one here is just a glitter clay it is white so i hope you'll be excuse me be able to see it sorry i have a little bit of a cold so i've just dusted a little bit of it just placing the clay on top of there i'm gonna give it a quick roll out and we're gonna see how um, this waffle pattern turned out. And sorry guys, peel it back. Ooh, that's a nice one. So I hope you can see that. Hand, maybe you can see it a little bit better. So the pattern actually turned out super, super cute. I'm just gonna cut it up here a little bit. Um, Actually, that would have been a really cute one to do really tiny earrings. And I'm just going to give it a quick cut because I want to test it out. So I'm just going to give it a quick roll as if I'm doing an ice cream cone. So I hope you can see the details. It worked out quite well. I guess white is not the proper color of clay to do it with but it turned out really nice. Um, so I hope this guy, this helped you out that you were able to do uh, your mold as well. And I hope that your earrings turned out better. I would love to see how it turned out. Um, another suggestion would have been when I went online to look to see if I possibly did something wrong is using a lighter color. So like an orangey color. Um, and that would have showed up better. So I hope you can see that there is somewhat syrup on the sides there. And when I glaze them, I think it will turn out really nice. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you like this video. Give it a big thumbs up. That's a big thumb. Um, and subscribe to us and like us, and we will bring you the next projects. Take care, guys. Bye.